For traders that have emailed and asked, the links for the free downloads are in the description box below. Just click on the link or copy and paste and put that in your browser. The four-step method to high performance trading and the seven-step daily routine for high performance traders create the rituals, the mindset, and the winning attitude to master the markets. Bulletproof yourself with your daily routine and your habits. Force yourself to be getting better, 1% better every single day. How good can you get, traders? Again, the free downloads, the links are down below. They're both free courses. Let's get started. Good day, trader. Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading, and I hope all my Canadian trading colleagues had a great Thanksgiving. Fantastic long weekend and back to business this week. So today we're talking about the process. Uh, we've talked about the day counts. We've talked about three levels of rise and fall, peak formations, equity hours, timings. I'm going to review everything today. And I want to emphasize a simple concept, and that is simplicity, 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 simplicity. And that means if it's simple, you can rinse and repeat. You can duplicate your results and your process. And I think uh, traders... Uh, get so caught in the myriad of all the gobbledygook and all these different things and in reality it comes down to some simple setups day in and day out and then having the patience over time to wait for those setups and developing the expertise in live time the skill the ability to process the time the levels, the price action, everything simultaneously so that you are calm, cool, and collected and understand whether or not it's just going to be a scalp, a blow off, a trend trade, or a sizable trade. Uh, again, one of my colleagues in the States, uh, Alex Temez, often says, uh, size the best, scalp the rest. And that's that's the approach. And so today... Coming back to just reviewing the timings, Asia 8 to 11 p.m., London 2 to 5 a.m., New York 8 to 11 a.m., and that's New York time. Now, one of the things with these timing windows is, is this. Now, of course, we can get trades in the first hour. We can get trades in the second hour, and we can get trades in the third and the fourth hour. We can get trades in the gap, but... My question for you as a trader is, what is your your daily routine? What is your, your process? When do you go to work? Do you spend seven hours at the screen or do you have a, a repeatable process because you understand the timings, the setups, and you can go to the screen in that three-hour window, have a high-quality one or two best trade setups, execute them, and then get off the screen. And there's a very specific reason to get off the screen. These markets will change once those hours change. Uh, algos, high frequency trading will kick in. But also your human nature will cause you to over trade. It will cause you to over leverage. It will cause you to take impulsive or rational, poor quality trading setups. And these initial high of the day, low of the day opportunities that will come in uh, are the best clean reproducible setups that will show up over and over again which means you can grow your trading business grow your trading account have less stress and have a duplicatable process that therefore will help you duplicate your results and scale them up in size so again timing window Asia 8 to 11 p.m. London 2 to 5 a.m. New York 8 to 11 a.m. Now, these session trades will vary from instrument to instrument based on not only where we are when the week starts, but each day based on how that template starts to evolve for the week, you may have a trade in Asia on the Canadian dollar. You may have a trade in the U.S. session on the British pound. You may have a trade in London on the Japanese yen. It may not always just be, I got to trade the pound because I trade London, or I'm looking for gold to move in London because that's when I trade and, and I trade gold. 
I reinforce the importance of addressing high quality, high probability trading setups, not trying to be the master of every move and in, a, in an instrument and then thinking that over time you can grow that in size when in reality all instruments move very similar they have different obviously volatility but the patterns you you need to become a pattern hunter a best trading setup pattern hunter and that's when each session whatever session you're trading the patterns will make sense based on understanding the session that you're trading whether or not that setup shows up in any one of the instruments the basket of instruments that you're following so often i hear traders say well i got too many instruments on the screen i can't see what's going on i don't i don't get any trades i miss everything well you should be able to filter out you know if you have 10 instruments you should be able to filter it down to four or five right away in terms of identifying a high probability opportunity and then narrow those down to one or two when that window starts to trade. So obviously they may all move, they may all set up, but there may be one or two that are high quality. So then we're looking at high and low of the day. Now this is where some confusion happens for traders because they've got their four hour, their one hour trends, they're lining all these other things up and I'm, I'm just going to keep hammering home. All I'm looking for when I go to a session is a setup. Uh, I have my overall thesis for the days of the week, the template that's playing out, the high and low of the day, the high and low of the previous sessions. So I'm mainly only trading New York. So I may be inside of London's high and low. But the timing window is what allows me to form my thesis. People say, do you have a telegram group or a trading room where you can give live signals? I don't know what's going to happen until 45 minutes into the into the window. 30 to 45 minutes. That's w that's when they go to work. They may not even move it until the second hour as we saw on gold, oil, and the indexes. So you have to understand it's it you have to understand your setups and then have the patience and the expertise to identify which ones fit that criteria. And then the skill to actually execute confidently in live time. Take the money, lock it in, get off the screen, and then understand which ones are scalable, meaning that they repeat and that you can continue to grow them, and then the ones which are very sizable and scalable. And then, of course, is there any news on the schedule? To me, the news often will be the beginning of the setup. So obviously, there'll be a high and low, but news will often be uh, in some cases, a catalyst to complete a move, but there will often be a opportunity where news begins the market trading. So let's take a look at today's charts. So again, the process, it's, a, it's just understanding your timing window, the high and low of the day, the three levels of rise and fall. That's what gives us our order flow for an executable opportunity, whether that's a trend trade, reversal trade, or a trading range. And then peak formations, that's what allow us to form our thesis, especially if the equity markets haven't opened. Because if there's peak formations, we do not want to counter trend the peak formation. They will take you back into the peak formation before moving the market. And then again, out of that, forming your thesis for a best trade setup, the timing window, and then is whether or not there are news events scheduled on the calendar. So we'll look at some different uh, instruments uh, Crude, spot crude, and uh, obviously, again, the pink line is my weekly separator. Crude has been on a reasonably bullish run and talked last week about front side, back side. We were on the front side of this day one, day two, day three reset, day one, day two, day three, again, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So again, no break in structure. Traders who tried to counter trend oil got their butts banked. So Monday we have a day that trades down and puts three peaks inside before marching up in the U.S. session to trigger the high of the week, the high of Friday. So again, you've heard me say when it's an inside day, I look for three peaks on the bottom, three peaks on the top. That was our break in structure potentially, taking out the low of Monday. 
sorry, Monday's trap volume. Now, for the astute traders who notice this, and I know that some traders message me, they very astutely noticed that this was a first red day. First red day, we look for three peaks. I look for three peaks. Now, the downside for me on this particular day was that we had our three peaks happen at the London Open. One push, two pushes in Asia, and you'll notice again they did not take out the low of the day. So another example where traders are looking at the previous day's low as a possible trading opportunity, but you're actually inside. You have to recognize when you're inside of a day's range. But we got our three peaks. I'll repeat this again and again. First red day, I need three peaks to trade that. This is a massive opportunity. Three peaks on a first red day. Now, ideally, I would have looked to have had that opportunity, obviously, in the U.S., but knowing this, what would our thesis be if Monday was first red day heading into the U.S. session, and in the gap time, we had three levels of rise? Now, let's zoom in a bit closer we have our three levels of rise beginning at double zeros, double zero to 50. Level one, 50 to double zeros. Level two, Let's straighten that up. And then we have double zeros to 50 again. Now people say, well, yeah, but how did you know that it was gonna go 150 pips? Because I'm looking at the clock. What time is it? I'm in the first 30 to 45 minutes of the 12 candle window of the New York session. We have our first red day. The market has gone up three levels of rise. Broken structure. This is before our second hour and the New York market NYMEX opens. So for traders who actually position themselves early on into the picture, 40 minutes in, that was uh, the first mouse trade. They may have had a starter position and we have a break in structure. So again, front side of the move. Clearly after three levels of rise, we've broken structure. They bring it back up into the third level. The market breaks down again, <clears throat> excuse me. And then proceeds to auction down into the open of the US session. This pin hammer, as I mentioned to a trader this morning when this was trading this is the anchor point for our pump and dump now the easiest way to understand this is paying attention as I mentioned last week to the timing 15 minutes false move 15 minutes false move into the peak formations on a first red day after three levels of rise the market pushes up for 15 minutes the next 15 minute candle opens and proceeds to auction up and engulf the M structure in our upper third, upper part of the box, the 100 pit box. We have not only have we taken out the peak formation inside, we're inside of the peak formation, but we are now targeting potentially the low of the day. So not only were the beginning of the pump and dump started, but the low of the day, depending on how this market trades and how long it takes, how fast it goes. But this was an opportunity to again, continue with the first red day thesis from the high of the week break in structure for an easy 75 to 100 pips, no stress trade. And again, you've heard me talk about price ramping up. That's a giveaway that there will be a vertical move. Peak formation in the first hour, three, level, three levels of rise, break in structure, pulls back, locks in potentially the double zeros now as the high of the day. New York NYMEX opens, 15 minutes false move, second 15 minute candle triggers breakout traders on the inside. So again, traders positioning so themselves long at the close of the 15, five minute, whatever, then we get our reversal M structure at the high of the session off double zeros on a first red day for an easy blow off of 75 to 100 pips. Simple, simple as that. 
so again, if 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 I'm looking for a sell, I want to see a pump up for a move down. This pattern right here, this pattern, the A top. Now, if I'm looking for a buy, we may see a market move up and dump down and dump down because we're getting the V bottom reversal, micro W, whatever we want to call that. But understand if the market proceeds to move up in that first hour and, and the equity markets haven't opened or the second hour is about to open and it's already fading, you feel like you're missing it, I'm waiting for the pump. I want to get that pump and I'm looking for the sell all the way back down through that low. Same process applies for the long trades. Market may move up and get traders chasing it long, then we get shorts in the market, but this is prior to our equity market or just as the equity markets are opening, and boom, they take out the high of the day. V bottoms and A tops. That's all I'm looking for. Coming back to my premise in oil right off the bat was they lifted they lifted just prior to the window so again look at the price they lift the price lift the price we're starting off at 50 that means there's a free fall space a minimum right there between 50 and double zeros they lifted the price up and then they lifted again when you see that lift and their space get very suspicious now they broke structure prior to the equity markets opening which meant that if they walked up to this level again and drop there is nothing to stop it from going all the way down so these are the setups again the a tops oil was perfect today first red day london high of the day opportunity the continuation three levels of rise peak formation for the short trade back to the low of the day and i tend to basket the canadian the swiss franc and the japanese yen in one group and i look at those three for which one if I if those are setting up may offer me the cleanest best trade setup now again coming back to uh, trading the US session for myself obviously uh, I, I'm a bit biased to the downside uh, to shorting and also I look at the pairs and I say well which pairs might actually move which sessions might they move best in and I'm following all the majors, Euro Yen, Pound Yen, Oil, Gold, NASDAQ, S&P. Not for any other particular reason other than I, I have decent spreads on all of those and that's about all I care to follow because there's plenty of great trades. But coming into the session today, I have my high, I have my low. I have a lower peak formation high right before the market drops in our gap heading into the U.S. 12 candle window. By the time I come to the screen, I have a peak formation high at 50. In the first hour, the market reverses off the low of the day in Asia and starts to proceed in the long direction. Now again, coming back to three levels of rise or fall. This market dropped prior to the market opening. So again, I'm emphasizing the process here of when I come to the screen, what I'm looking at. This market dropped three levels into the open of the US 12 candle window. Now, for those of you that have been following me, you've heard me say this over and over and over again. The first 30 to 45 minutes typically will establish one of the extremes and the higher the low may or would be locked in. Now, in this particular case, the market proceeded to auction down in that first 30 minutes before reversing below the quarter level. So again, down at to 75 and then reversed coming up heading into again if you're just focusing on New York market one hour whatever that may be but we now have a market that is potentially going to reverse into the New York session there are, there are opportunities in the long and the short direction here so we have a market that proceeds to start to move up at the end of the first hour. This is our pin hammer engulfment and the market starts its reversal. It takes out the lower high of the session, 
takes out the lower high of the session prior to the New York equity markets opening. We have traders who are in the money from the gap time, which is the Europe London window who have shorted the high of the day. We have traders in the money who have shorted above the quarter level at 25. Now, New York equity market opens and proceeds to auction down the first 15 minutes down into the move up that took out the high of the session. This engulfs and the second 15 minute candle opens and auctions down one, two, three engulfments underneath of double zeros. So there's our little W in a continuation low hanging fruit trade back into traders who are in the money. An easy 25 pips plus trend trade back up towards the high of the day. Now some traders again may have thought that this was going to uh, carry through the high of the day uh, but if we go back and look at our 15 minute chart uh, my thesis was that the high of the day potentially was locked in. We had a break in structure in the London session, but we also had peak formations to the upside. And when the market moved down 50 pips from that move in the upper box, again, you'll notice peak formation high. I'll just zoom in on this a little bit better. Peak formation high. They brought traders back up into the peak formation, which was an easy 25 pip scalp for pulling back and revisiting that at the end of our 12 candle window and engulfing for a explosive 50 pip move plus back down through our anchor point, which created the order flow back into the peak formation. So when you are getting the opportunity to buy low and there's a peak formation that you're heading back into at the beginning of a 12 candle window, I don't care what session it is, understand that this potentially is the order flow, one push, two pushes, three pushes for the continuation move back down. Day two, high of the day opportunity, Canadian dollar. Looking at the Euro again, now we're on day two, we've had this pair take out the low of Monday, triggering breakouts, but coming back to the high of the day in the Asian session, sorry, the London session before breaking down and then breaking through the high of the day. This is our break in structure on the inside. So again, different than a, a day that breaks a daily high as we've just had, had happen. This break in structure on the inside immediately helps you form a thesis that this market is going to be going back up. We're on day two. They've broken structure on the inside. The low potentially is locked in. We have a peak formation low in place. The market has traded above the lower high of the Asian session. That now can become our level underneath the double zeros, potentially now for an explosive move. You'll notice the same behavior, one push, two pushes, and a third push into the low at the end of the second hour after the New York markets open, New York equity markets open, and take traders down into the low of the week. They break structure on the inside and pull back for the explosive short squeeze at the beginning of the third hour. So when you see this type of setup, you should already in your mind be thinking this potentially is a third hour short squeeze opportunity. That is in itself a trading setup. Also critical to understand that if you're trading this late in the window, whether you're Northern Hemisphere or whatever, and this market is coming out of a short squeeze and you try to counter trend that you will absolutely get pulverized, especially in an explosive market like the indexes, gold or oil. So again, day two, they've come down, they've triggered breakout traders, they've broken structure first in the Europe London window on the lower Asian high, and then broken structure on the high of the day itself, creeping trend down into the New York equity market opens 15 minutes 
taking traders false move into the peak formation low. So again, don't counter trend the peak formations. Break in structure, creeping trend into the peak formation, explosive short squeeze back through the high of the day. So again, timing window coming to the screen, especially for the American indexes. Uh, obviously, they provide opportunities in the other sessions, but sticking specifically to the New York markets, uh, obviously, my bias with the indexes is that they're definitely going to move in the New York session. But coming back to my day count, I know that we have already broken the low of Monday. We've already been trading lower, so we're getting traders shorting lower and lower into the markets. We have a break in structure in the first hour, first hour of the US window. So again, three levels of rise, starting at 25, 50, 75 double zeros, 25 and pushing up before reversing at the high of the session. So again, traders may be thinking that it's going to go all the way, but it reverses on the inside. We'll take a look at that. So again, when the window starts, the first thing I do is I'm looking, are they going up or are they going down? We have a line here at 50 and again, some traders levels may be different depending on how their broker's uh, information is supplied to them. But you'll notice, again, emphasizing understanding timing, 30 to 45 minutes, we have a high at uh, sorry, 25, and then an engulfment of that high before breaking down. That is a micro head and shoulders above the high of the London session, which is now our lower high of the day. So they've now cleaned that level out. This Engulfment is 38 minutes into the first hour prior to the equity markets opening. The market proceeds to auction lower. A couple traders messaged me and, and said, would it be okay if I had shorted that earlier? <clears throat> That's entirely your choice. The perception again being that you're missing out on something. But the more important understanding sometimes is realizing that regardless of what happens prior to the open of the session, once the session opens, it's going to move stronger and faster. So sometimes this getting in here, you're caught in the market for 30 to 45 minutes that may be just grinding sideways, even though your thesis is that they've locked in the high of the day. Getting in early may, again, the pins, you're just, you're potentially going to be in stress. So again, my approach is to wait for the equity market timing window. One, two minutes before sometimes there are some great opportunities. Uh, again, that's something you have to gauge on the day based on the setup itself. But we get our New York equity market opened, pinned down. We're in, a, we're in our broken down market. Thesis is now that we've locked in the high of the day. The vertical move was up, broke down inside. Peak formations are up. Peak formations are up. My thesis is that they're going to go back down to the low of the day, day two, and continue that move lower. Peak formations are up. The market pins up into that level before engulfing and dropping down. I treat this the same as I would an announcement opportunity if my thesis is that this is going to continue. Now, the first bounce engulfs the low of that session, and that's a no-go. That, to me, is trapping shorts down low. However, when this market rolled over, when this market rolled over, Traders had the opportunity to short the rollover inside of the pump up for a nice 50 pip continuation trade opportunity if they were looking to short that with the thesis that the market was still targeting not only the low of London, <clears throat> but potentially even lower. Even though we're down low, this market still gave a level above 25 for a continuation move vertically through the low. So timing wise, there's an opportunity at the high. Traders could have gotten in early, shorted it up top, double zeros, double zeros. There was a continuation low hanging fruit opportunity on the first bounce in line with that explosive move back to the low of the day. Critical to understand if you are inside the high and low to not counter trend 
the indexes unless you are inside of a massive squeeze and that squeeze should be aligned with your trade your trade direction should be aligned with the squeeze and the thesis that the higher low of the day is already locked in the S&P was very similar so I'm just going to keep the one minute on here because I want to show traders again the process London forms a peak formation high peak formation low they creep down to the low of the session this is this is my process when I come to the screen for the US session the market then proceeds to have locked in the low double zeros one two and a third level of rise taking out the high of the London session and putting heat up into traders who have shorted the Asian session who they've obviously already stopped out but in that first hour the market completes a third level of rise and we'll zoom in here before breaking down on the inside so breaking down you we talked about front side versus back side a micro trend line go read Al Brooks talk about micro trend lines don't trade against them until you have a trend line break trend line break a retest that does not follow through and breaks down again thesis is now that peak formation high is locked in for this window for this trade opportunity potentially heading into the New York Open peak formation highs breaking down our low of the day low of the US anyways our low of our day is down down below that's our low the market then breaks down inside and pins through the low of the session and pins back up into the peak formation highs biases to the downside the same situation happened with the Nasdaq I'm looking for a first bounce opportunity but that engulfs the entire first 15 minutes no good I'm looking for that pump up for the opportunity to short the breakdown at the quarter level for the continuation move back down to the low of the day an easy low hanging fruit 75 pip move more than it was 100 plus pips tradable 70 75 locked in before it begins its reversal trading back the other way so one trader asked me why didn't you go long off the bottom well number one I'm, I'm taking that trade and I'm getting off the screen that's all I want I want easy money this still requires you to be patient and the, and then deciding where do you want to get in you want to get in on the first engulfment break a structure do you want to get in over here do you want to wait for the next hour you'll notice they keep lifting the price and pulling back as opposed to a vertical explosive move and this is in a blow-off phase so again the difference in types of price action my question for these traders is that yes you are in the right direction but where did you put size on where could you put size on would I necessarily load the boat down low on the last leg of the journey no I would not first red day high of the day three peaks in the London session would I be looking to put size into this move as it collapses absolutely traders have asked me how do you tell when a trade is going to accelerate will come back to the thesis of your setup three peaks London open the the low of the day is horizontal my thesis is that this is going to collapse if I'm trading that at the high of the day you'll notice as this rolls over the acceleration is above the low of the day for an explosive vertical collapse I want to be positioning myself inside I've talked about the breakout candle anything inside of the breakout on the way down once it's there I'm done I will have all of my size in somewhere in this collapsing area as it rolls over before it comes into the breakout candle thesis being it should collapse through there I want to be able to be a break even and hold on for the ride first red day that is a massive opportunity it's gonna keep going continuation trade to the low of the day we've established a peak formation low thesis now is that this could be a reversal not only a short trade but a reversal squeeze on day two or possibly the low of the week now for a retest on day three 
with lower peak formation highs in the lower level, you'll notice again on, on oil, a 300 pip box, and we're on level one heading into day three. We have the Fed tomorrow night or tomorrow afternoon. So we have lower highs, the high of the initial move down up top, still well over 300 pips away, $3, whatever you want to call it. But we're down in level one, shorting it down low. I want to put size on on the move down out of first red day, but now we may be trading into the low. We've got a break in structure on the inside, but not a break of a session high for break in structure on a day. We'll have to see what happens tomorrow. So if we zoom in on gold day two, again, I'm just emphasizing the process and understanding when I come to the session, I can only respond to how price behaves. We're down low. It's day two. We've broken yesterday's low on the day that we break a low and we trade with peak formations above and below. I redraw my highs and lows. Day two, we're inside. We have a peak formation low in the gap time that breaks structure. We break structure on the inside. The thesis is then that we can have a short trade down, but we could be also in a short squeeze reversal opportunity. So when the session begins, we have three levels of rise. Peak formation at 50 on the 15 minute chart. So we have 50, 75, 75, double zeros, double zeros, 25. We don't get a pump. So again, traders, uh, uh, you've heard me say this, there, there's no pump. That's going to be a trend trade or we need to wait. And that means that obviously there still can be a pump. We have three levels of rise. The peak formations potentially now may be locked in. If we just zoom back to our high of the London session, we've taken that out. We've gone 25 pips outside of the high of the London session into the peak formations from Asia. So we've taken out the London high of the day. We've broken structure on the inside, broken structure on the inside. New York opens and breaks down. Then we get our gift. The gift is the high of the day potentially is locked in for the beginning of this session. We get our pump 15 minutes into the peak formation high. The second 15 minute candle begins and reverses and gives us our M engulfment at double zeros for a 50 pip low hanging fruit trade back into where that move began. Again, we talked about lifting price. We lift price up. There's space underneath. It's a setup. That's all that it is. It's a setup. Uh, so there were plenty of opportunities. And then the key thing is understanding to walk away. So this vertical move up gives us our A top trading setup into the peak formation at the New York equity market open. Peak formation into the peak formation for a 50 pip low hanging fruit trade opportunity. Done and dusted. Walk away. Get off the screen. Other traders want to trade the reversal. I'm biased to the downside, done in that hour, get away from the screen, lock it in, come back later. Keep it simple traders, focus on your best setups, reproducible, less screen time, scalable opportunities. Have a great day and may the markets go with you.